Bob from Awesome Moisture Productions, and we're here with Stitch Mushroom Advent. There you go. When we travel down to Nashville to see this show tonight, the Puncher Cock in 4 with Psycho Stick. Just to say, I was really impressed. It's my second third time seeing them in but y'all always put on a hell of a good show. Right on. Uh, if you don't care, we'll get right to the first question. Uh, basically, uh, we just want to know your opinion on the state of the world today and how it's affecting your music and your own words because obviously there's an anti-government going on in the comments. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much of just, you know, being anti-government because I mean, there are fans who have been there, done that, you know, Ministry, KMFDM, you know, Marilyn Manson, lots of fans that I grew up being a fan of, you know, kind of said stuff along the similar lines and trying to, you know, kind of push the envelope a little more because to me it's like things just seem to be getting worse and worse with, you know, the state of the world in general and um, no one really seems to be caring and that really bothers myself and my projects as a whole. Part of the band is pretty much to bring you know, awareness to you know, the fact that the faults that are happening in the world and the things that you know, are aggravating me and, and I feel need to be addressed and no one's addressed. Everyone's singing about strippers and crap and drinking and partying. And it's, just, it's just further, I feel like it's further adding to the demise of humanity. You know? so people are becoming ruder, people are becoming self absorbed, anti social. You know, people consider hanging out to be going on Facebook and talking about, you know, what you did that day. No one gives a shit, you know. It's like, go outside, hang out with your friends, do something, write, read, you know, create music, create art. Like, I just feel like a lot of the technology advancements, too, although they're great, although I find myself glued to the phone as much as the next person, but it's like, it's just, it's, it's creating like a race of people that are just reliant on you know, these digital devices and don't know how to function without them, you know, people don't have their phone for like an hour, they freak out. It's like, there's so much more when I was growing up, um, you know, going on that, you know, people are definitely losing sight of, and that's kind of what, trying to address, you know, not necessarily trying to just, you know, bitch and complain about the things are wrong, but more providing, like, a solution within the lyrics, you know, especially on the next record that we're writing, definitely we're going even farther and farther into what we can do and what we can try, you know, even though I don't you know, think that, you know, you know like change, change the world with it, I mean, but that's the goal. You know, whether or not people listen is, is up to them. It's very much a very underground level thing right now, um, but I feel that, you know, it needs to happen. It's the right time for something to kind of happen because no one is doing things the way that I think we're doing. Speaking for myself, I mean, I know a lot of this is all this last album is really, really I go to work every day, I go to school every day, and uh, I see what you're talking about, the radios and everything. And I'm one of the four people that's experiencing this shit every day. Mm -hmm. And then it's really good to see a band such as all. Yeah. You know, clearly come from where we come from. Yeah, I mean, I grew up, I mean, I'm 32 now, I mean, I grew up in a different time. You know, I grew up in a time where, you know, when I was 15 years old, your friends picked you up, you know, and you went out and did do crap, whether it was just, you know, going to a concert and actually going to a concert and enjoying a concert. Now you go to a concert and you see kids in the crowd are fucking with their phones and they're, you know, they don't, you know, people don't want to go out. They want to watch YouTube videos of the band performing. It's like, it ain't the same, you know, you have to For experience something. film the pit in the concert instead of enjoying it and watching Yeah, people are like, oh, we'll do this band and film it. And it's like, enjoy it and have fun. Put your phone away. Leave your phone in the damn car. Like, that's what I do. Like, when I go to theme parks or concerts or, you know, anything that's like I want to get away from, it's like, this shit behind. It's like people just need to learn to be human and, you know, socialize, interact with people. I couldn't agree more. That's awesome answer. Okay. Move on to the next one. Um, notice, well, basically, what kind of connection do you think you'll have with the fans? I notice you guys get in the crowd a lot and mix it up. It's almost like you share the spotlight with your fans. Not a lot of bands do that, but a few do. Um, Dan will probably answer that one because he is very much very very crowd oriented person. Little, little Dan over there would love to answer that question. Yeah. We get you to introduce yourself. Bro. What's up? So, Daniel Fox. What's the question? Question what? <laughs> what's the question? <laughs> what's the pop quiz about? What kind of connection do you have with your fans and everything like that? Because I've noticed y'all are always. Or the singer in all the videos I've seen from that time, always jumping in the crowd and just being a part of the actual pit, which a lot of bands don't do that anymore. Well, the way you gotta look at it is like, there's the bands today, like, 
we grew up in the 90s with like Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, and like, White Zombie. Like, exactly. They were so like into the crowd, like jumping in the crowd, like all that. And, like you don't see that nowadays. And we just want to bring that back because that's what we grew up on. You don't see it, and it's, you miss that. And kids not, these days, they don't know about that. They're just like guys in jeans and tight shirts, fucking up there, just playing music and not having any emotion. Like it's a way of letting out aggression too. You know what I mean? I'll make the show feel energetic when you do that. That's the point I'm trying to come across, and it's real cool how they're. I mean, it's just it's a connection with the fan base and the band. I mean, yeah. when y'all are in the crowd like that. If you're a true musician and you're feeling what you're doing, your emotions come out that way, and you express yourself that way. If you're not feeling it, you're just up there faking it, and there's no that's, you're no way to be in a music business. Sorry. Right. They can they can chop it up. Yeah, for sure. This is awesome anyway. Um. But yeah, um, you know, we grew up, you know, loving that stuff. We grew up being the kids. We were the kids that were in the crowd and moshing and getting bloody noses and jumping off stage and talking about a torn ACL coming off a fear factor. Yeah, concert. but you know, back then too, you know, the, to the crowd control was was very family oriented. You know, and not to sound like you know, Judge Juggalo or anything like that, but you know, just it was like everyone had each other's backs. You know, if yeah, some you dude fell, fell down, down, you had him. You know, it was fun. People were smiling. Now you get in pits and some, you know, it's muscle not head. You know, bro dude in there throwing yeah, punches. Yeah, it's, it's not like, even kids anymore. It's a bunch of fucking kids like throwing your fists and hardcore dancing. Yeah. And then you fucking you try to slam dance or like get in like that old rock stuff. Beer, and they're like, like five people what are you beat? doing, you fuck fag? Yeah, it's like, and our singer really Scott, you know, he grew up, you know, loving hardcore music, so that's where a lot of his real hardcore music got the hardcore today. <clears throat> Actually, good like some more for myself. I Tech do agree about the fans. Yeah. Come with it. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the translation is just—it's all about having fun, putting on a show, and putting on a visual reflection of what our music's trying to say. You know, it's very aggressive. It's very angry. It's very, but also trying to fuck. You know, be positive and motivate and you know everything. And that's why we have such an energy. Oh, people's eyes sure. out there not just watching just, fucking yeah. Jersey Shore every day and buying into the corporate machine and realizing that the world is fucked up. You hear this, Blair? Fuck Jersey Shore. Yeah, fucking fist pump. <laughs> Go tan some more. Bring back Mirror Children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go shows. Go shows. Yeah. It still comes on. I seen it the other morning. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. We're gonna move on so we don't take up too much of your all's time. We got two more, but uh... You uh, fucking better. Yeah. This is, you're really cutting into my doing nothing time loading right now my drinking no. light beer and loading a trailer time because we can't afford yeah, a crew about you beer. no dude it's been long <laughs> all right so the third question have you given much thought to what will happen if you guys blow up as big as mushroom head or slipknot as far as how you change your stage so how big the tonic could possibly be because i see you guys blowing up a lot of people i know we're talking about y'all it's hitting the street real hard well we're trying to and that's the kind of thing is that what we're doing you know what mainstream people and what the music industry considers what we're doing is not marketable it's not you know trendy it's not something that could be on the radio it's not something that they can put on you know a shirt for teeny boppers to be into it's more of like that underground metal fan base. I mean, we'd love to branch out and be huge. It'd be great, because there are things that him and I want to do with the show that we can't afford, and we can't have the crew. When we're even traveling in a 12-passenger van in a 5x7 trailer, you have to pull off the Home Depot light show with floodlights and strobes. But I mean, when we do our headlining shows in Cleveland, we have projector screens, and we have visuals that actually tell the story of what the lyrics are actually saying in the music, because, you know, upon first listening, you wouldn't really know that there is a lot of powerful stuff in our songs if you really take the time to actually read it. And we want a complete, you know, interpretation of that live. And to do that requires bigger stages, bigger production, more money. You know, we need to make more money so we can put on a larger than life show. But for the budget we're at, I think we definitely go above and beyond what most national bands even do when they are at that level and they don't do shit. You know, um, and actually relate to our fans and yeah. not push them away and just not go straight to your tour bus after the show. Right? And, uh, but I mean, this isn't a job. This, I mean, we, uh, granted, yeah, this is our job. But I mean, this is what I, all I've wanted to do since I was 11. I never wanted to be in a band, don't want to perform, and and I get to do it now. So therefore, you never can lose sight of where you were when you liked going to concerts. And that's all we're trying to bring back is that you know if we can change that and a couple people and actually like you know stir their brain to go whoa this was actually a really good time and they tell their friends about it you know to introduce them into things that we grew up on when they were like two years old 
You know, that's not happening nowadays, you know. Marilyn Manson's not doing what he used to do. You know, White Zombie's done. You know, Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor retired. I mean, it's like all these bands that were so inspiring and had so much to say and so much to bring in the theatrical thing are done. They're not doing it. So it's like, where does that leave? You know, now you have these... Every band sounds like fucking Nickelback or, you know, Godsmack or it's just, down and Lady Gaga and like just the shit that's popular just makes me sick because America used to be built and founded on rock and fucking roll and now it's based on shit and like dance at Jersey Shore and pop collars and going out to bars every night and drinking when you got like, you know, people that are poor and complain about not having any fucking money but then they're out at the bar every night spending every last dime they have to get shit face wasted to go pass out and hate their life. It's like, do something about it. Change your fucking life, you know? Don't complain about it. And like the art, for example, what you're just talking about this morning, you know, Yeah, just, I, fucking paint, fucking draw, <laughs> read a book. You know? Yeah, here is a hell of a painter. Yeah. If you ever need any, anything, he's awesome, man. I mean, it scares me because you think that's like there's a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of, you know, time goes by, you know, things are written that are left behind for people to carry on what history even was. Now it's like everything's so digital and typed and things where it's like if the entire internet went down, like everything's done, everything's gone. Like there's no, like bookstores are shutting down, CD stores are done, you know, now everything's digital. It's like there's no attachment. Like, when we bought CDs, no you'd open them, just the smell of opening a new CD got me excited. Just the smell of the fresh print, pulling the disc out, reading who fucking mixed the thing was exciting. You know, all that little stuff, like who did the artwork, who did this, and seeing the stuff, they actually, you know, understand what the band's trying to say, not just click, download now, okay, there it is, it's in my catalog of thousands of other bands I don't care about, you know? But, you know, it's, I, I don't know. And I mean, half of me, half of me thinks, you know, sometimes when I sit around and say this stuff, that it's just like, oh, I'm becoming that person. You know, like your parents were really like, oh, I don't understand the music you kids are listening to, and you kids, you have it so easy, you know, from, but I mean, that's just, that's just evolution and technology. It's just a matter of what people do with it. I think that people are just definitely abusing technology and not using it. They're abusing drugs, or abusing alcohol, or abusing you know technology, or just stupidity. everything. Like you know, we were saying before, like you know, I was saying about the rudeness thing. It's like you know, I still am the guy that holds open doors for complete strangers. I'm the guy that says, "Excuse me, if I'm walking to the club and I lightly do that, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, man, sorry." You know, like people, and then you know, you get other people that just slam into you, spill shit on you, fall into you, and you just nothing. You know, pull up the door open for someone, they walk by you and act like you're an asshole. It's like, Bob, it's all right, I don't want to punch you in your fucking face now. It's like, it's just, like I said, the, the value of humanity is just, and it's really going to take, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to really wake people up, you know. Someone, you know, definitely someone needs to leave this country that can stir things up because it's just like this safe road of just, who knows what the hell is even going on anymore. I'm guilty of technology right now. Yeah, there's dance something going on. But um you know, who knows where it goes, you know. I don't know. One can only hope that the world blows up. I can, I can I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep my, my rants to a minimum here because I tend to go on and on and on about this stuff, so I'm trying to cliff note it for you a little bit. You ever think of not really, man. <laughs> we'll just get up right off the last one, so we'll take it where you'll find them. Basically, it's just you want know, to address the metal community or your fans or anything. The ton of fans right now. I mean, yeah, like I mean, well, the, sell your album, whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, you know, thank, you know, obviously thank all the fans that have stuck. You know, we, this band's been through a lot in the past few years as far as trials and tribulations and actually pulling through and overcoming those. That's because the fact that this band means more than just, you know, we want to be in a band, we want to be cool, we want to tour. You know, there's more to it, there's more behind it, and we overcome all those obstacles. But, you know, definitely want to thank everyone that comes out to the shows and actually gets it. And I really wish there was hundreds of thousands of more of you, so you really need to help us and find those damn people and bring them to a damn show and give them, you know, a copy of the CD and then make them buy it when they come to it. But, um, <clears throat> um, as far as, I, I lost my train of thought, brain fart. <laughs> um, yeah, you can edit, you can edit that screw up out. But, um, <laughs> Sorry, I just basically we just sometimes I talk and it's just to address forget. your fans, oh, the metal community fans, in general, whatever you want to say, community. just wrapping it up. Like based on the internet and all that shit, like all these fucking blabbermouth sites or fucking assholes sit down there and trash talk every band. Fuck all of you. What are you doing? You're sitting in your fucking mother's basement talking shit on the internet 
I want to be like Jay and Silent Bob and find all you fuckers and kick the shit out of you. You're not doing anything to help the world. We're trying to at least fucking make a dent and do something different, you know? Open people's eyes, you know? It's just sad, but all of our fans that are here with the Ventana tattoos and supporting us and buying merch and coming out, driving hours for shows, thank you. It means a lot for me and him to go out here and be able to live our dream and, like, carry the torch of all the bands that we used to go see and just relive that and lived our own little piece of it, you know? We're doing our history of it. We're living our dreams of Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails and every other band that like, kids look up to and, like, doing their thing, you know? It probably makes no sense, but fuck you, I don't care. <laughs> I'm a real person. I have errors. Yeah. There you go. Thank you again. And thank you, Crush Drums, Zosian Symbols, Evans Drumheads, Chromark Sticks. Because yeah, at the end of the day, we're we're human. You know, we yeah. go to sleep in our apartments. No, and drive our to drive our. No, oh, I'm saying we're home and drive our. You know, mid middle. You know, our you know middle class, lower class vehicles, and don't have a whole lot of money doing this. I mean, you can afford to. Yeah, I mean, dude, I have to drive a 2003 Toyota Corolla. I mean, nothing glamorous. You know, I live in a one bedroom apartment. I buy my groceries at Giant Eagle. You know, I don't. You know. Going out at Texas Roadhouse is like going in for me, you know. So it's just like you know, we're not, you know. And that's the, that's that's the thing that, that that bums me out about a lot of people that there's a big misinterpretation. People think that as soon as you're in a band, you're making money. Well, how can you make money if everyone is downloading your CD? You have like hundreds of fans coming out to see you, and out of like say you got 300 kids in the crowd, 20 of them actually own your record. You know, even when, with Mushroom Head, we see even more with Mushroom Head, which is case, like almost crazy that we decided to start something else to franchise off of Mushroom Head and to do our own thing. So if the day was to ever come where Mushroom Head was ever, you know, years from now done, we still will do this because I'll do this until I can't stand up anymore, you know, or until I'm so old that it looks embarrassing, you know. But <laughs> Even that, I'll be behind a screen and make it look cool, but or be in a wheelchair and create part of the act. But um, yeah. um, but yeah, that's what bums me out about it a lot is that you know people have a big misinterpretation like oh you rock stars you all this money and it's like I, the guy that works at McDonald's full time makes more money than us because at, at that Friday he knows he's making that paycheck. With this, it's like you don't know him and I put up thousands of dollars just to get out here, just to get the vehicle, order the merch fix our stuff, get new gear, and then you hope and pray that the money you just drained out of your account gets replenished by merch sales that the club decides to actually pay you because we're not selling out venues, we're not making hand over fist money here, we're making just enough to hopefully pay for the gas to get to the next show, maybe get a Motel 6 hotel that doesn't have bed bugs in it and roaches, and then get up and do it again. We're still wearing eyeliner and barely sleeping and sore and you know, because we love doing this, because we create art, we create entertainment, and that's all it's about, what we're here for. And you guys do a very good job of it. Thoroughly enclosed in my Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're going to wrap this up real quick. Yeah, wrap it up. Wrap it up, B. We're going to let these guys get back to it. It's Monster Melissa Productions, me and Bob, Jason Joyce on the camera. Thank you, guys. Hell of a camera operator. Damn handsome son of a bitch. Yeah, very. He is cute. What are you doing later? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, in the rock stars, making money. Oh, I would be a groupie. <laughs> <laughs>